What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Emmanuel. First of all, thank you. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I know it's been a hot minute, but I got a super, super dope video for y'all. And without wasting y'all time, let's just get right into it. Today, I'm going to show you how I was able to turn this born room and how I was able to use lighting to transform it into this beautiful set. A couple things that we're going to, you know, talk about today is some of the challenges that I encountered while doing this. Um, I'll touch a little bit about the gear that I used, how I overcame those challenges, and we're going to dive a little bit into DaVinci and just talk about my color grading process. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we even start, um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys some of the gear that I was able to use. Um, my camera is my Zcam E2S6, and then I use the Zine 35mm lens, and that's pretty much it in terms of camera lens combo. Um, for my light, I use three Pavel 230X, I use the Apollo 1 light, beautiful light by the way, and then some practical lighting, and then outside I use the newer SL150. Before we even talk about how I lit this, let's talk about some of the challenges that I experienced. One of the first things that I ran into in terms of issues was being able to create color separation that I wanted. And the way that I was able to overcome that is by truly understanding the principle of additive and reductive lighting. But just knowing when to take off lights and how to take off lights really, really helped isolate my colors and you know create that separation that I wanted. So the first light outside is the newer SL150W, um, the old version, this thing's very old. The next light we're going to talk about is my practical, which in this case, um, I used um, a, one of those Pixar kind of, you know, lamp kind of vibe that has the long like strip that makes it bendable. I used that particular one, I turned off, you know, the actual light in the lamp. Let's talk about the Pavel tubes. I used three Pavel tubes in this situation to create like that blue, you know, ambience, that blue room tone. So the first Pavel tube that I had, I placed it, as you guys are seeing right now, in the behind the scene, I placed it on top of the shelf, shelves, on top of the shelf, <laughs> on top of the shelves. And the next light that I used was the one you guys are seeing right now. I hung that um, on top of the ceiling and I was just able to just use some, you know, string and just tied on top of that and just you know had that you know beaming down and then finally i had another power tube in the back you know bounced off the ceiling so the power tube that was on the shelf and the power tube that was um in the back was bounced off the ceiling and i did that to raise my overall room tone and the overall ambience you know in this particular spot and then let's talk about my key light so for my key light, I use what has become probably my favorite light that I own currently in my kit, the Apollo 1. Such a portable, small, punchy light, and it's um, RGBWW, and the way it renders skin tones, it's just so beautiful. So that was the light that I used as my key light. What I did was I took a black cloth and just used that as a skirt to pretty much skirt um, a spill um, from my Apollo light. And that really helped to maintain the directionality of my key light and just really just have it shining directly at my face. So that's another way I used reductive lighting by putting a skirt over it. I was able to subtract light from this room and the overall ambient um, to allow my blues to really stand out. I had to be really creative about this was so the bed that I was sitting on had gray bed sheets. So what I did was I took a black blanket. It helped to control the bounce that was coming from the, you know, from the ceiling, um, from the gray, you know, bed sheet onto my face. So pretty much that black blanket acted as negative feel. So when it comes to lighting, that is pretty much it. Just a simple, um, one, two, three, four, five, including practical, just a simple six light setup. But the most important thing um, 
that I hope you guys take away from this whole thing isn't necessarily the amount of lights, but the ways I was able to add light and take away light. Um, that definitely will help you guys, especially if you're wanting to create color separation in all of your images. Can't forget the last thing that I added, Hayes, you guys, if you know me on this channel, you know I love Hayes, man. I use Hayes for everything. That's like my cheat code. Like if my lighting sucks, just throw Hayes and boom, cinematic, instant, instant cinematic footage if you just add Hayes. It is crazy what Hayes does in terms of volumetric lighting. So if your lighting sucks or if you just having a hard time with light, boom, just throw Hayes. Let's go ahead and dive into DaVinci and I'll walk you guys through some of my color grading process. But anyways, what I do is on my very last note, I always add a CSD, which is color space transform. And for this, um, since I'm shooting with the Z cam, now obviously it's not going to be a one-to-one -one match with the Ari Alexa, but I found that now when I use the Ari Alexa color space transform to try to get my footage to a Rec 709, it works great for me. And um, like I said, that's probably not the right way to do it, but it works great and it gives me great results. Let's see the before and then after this helps me get to a good starting point let's also pay attention to the nodes i'm um, down here let's see it again the before you guys see that and then the after so that's just my first step so then the next thing that i do is my global adjustment so this is where i try to get my look you know as close as I want it to be and if you click on here we can see that I did a primary balance and a log grade so pretty much what I did was if we go here I just pretty much um, tried to get it pretty much as close as possible in terms of like my log footage and just my general exposure um, and the whole footage in general so that's pretty much what i did i just moved my gain um in increased my you know gamma my lift all of that stuff to get me um this particular look uh, let's see so we can see that i've done a primary balance again but this time more of the color so let's see what happens so this is just my um, general adjustment to where I try to get just exposure so here is when we start to pretty much color correct um, all that blue and try to shift it slightly to where you know I wanted it to be um, let's see if it lets me click into that so for this you guys can see I had my temperature at 300 and my 10 at negative 7 and then let's go to the log and yeah that's pretty much all i did on this was pretty much trying to bring it to a point where um i can pretty much color correct so this is my color correction node and then on here i did you know a couple things on here so this is where i went in to pretty much go to create start creating my look so now that i was able to come from here to where I was able to do a um, color correction. This is where I go to develop my look. On here, what I did was I added some blues down here. So I just brought it a little bit to the right. You guys can see here on my offset. And then I added some warmth on my um, skin tone. So let's just go ahead and undo that. So you see what happens when we undo that? We get this big old blob of just yuck, which once again, if that's the look you're going for, that could work, but let's undo that. Um, yeah, let's undo. Oh, that's just a, okay. So let's undo that, and then we're back to where we started. And then on here on my gain, um, and this is also on the primary tab on the color wheels. My gain just added a little bit of warmth, and then on my gamma, gamma, <laughs> on my gamma. I just added a little bit of warmth as well. And then slightly on my lift, 
I just brought it down slightly, as you guys can see right here, just very subtle. Let me show you the difference. So that's the before and the, oh, before and the after, just very subtle. Um, the only reason I did that, cause I didn't want just this greenish um, color. I wanted it to be more bluish. So that's what I did. And then when we go to our log image, so for the log, I just also, what I did was I pulled it, cause if we see right here, um, what I did on the log as well was I went down there and then I also brought it down right here. So you guys see that? Pretty much I did the same thing on the primary and then the log. I just wanted to just get my blues as close as possible. Now I'm sure this is not how you do it, but this is how I did it and it worked for me. So, hey. And then on here, what I also did was I turned on editable splines and I was able to use that to move my custom curves um, to really help me add some punch and to really help me um, increase my contrast on there. And that's pretty much what I did on that node. And then this next node is where I fine tuned, you know, my whole color and just really made everything stand out to me personally. Um, so right here, as you guys can see, um, my hues, um, I brought it slightly down so that way my skin tones aren't like too red. And then uh, let's go here bumped up some saturation which let me go ahead and bump that up right now and actually on here we'll do an overall saturation bump boom uh, i don't like that i don't like that so so that's what we did and then we raised the saturation on the blues as well so let's look at the before and the after so we see just it made my blues more blue and then what else did I do on here? Then let's go to our, um, where is it at? Uh, saturation versus saturation. So I just put a point there and just raised it up a little bit and just did the same back there. So that's pretty much it on my grade. Like I said, um, this isn't super in depth and then probably half of the stuff that I do is in the right way, but hey, it works. And then of course you can under my last grade, node you cannot forget to add your grain so let's show you a before and the after look that is it guys thank you for paying attention um and i truly truly appreciate you guys wow the fact that a lot of you made it this far man i truly 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 appreciate you guys for sticking you know or around to the end of the video it really means a lot to me I love you guys. I really, truly appreciate y'all. Y'all stay safe out there. Hug your loved ones. Tell your loved ones that you love them. Just go ahead and spend time with the people that matter. Keep shooting. Keep having fun. Peace.